Hey everybody, welcome to another special edition of Bob Bakes. Today we're gonna to be making salty lemon shortbread. It's gonna be a deli- <laughs> You're in the shot. Oh. <laughs> Take. Is that working for you? Yeah, that's good. That's good. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Home Movies. I'm Allison Roman, and today we are making a very special recipe. Not only are we going to bake, we are apologizing, we are correcting, we are learning, we are loving, and we're having fun. And above all, we're making salty lemon shortbread, Allison's version. It's wrong in the book, I'm sorry. What happened in the book? Well, David, you know, when you're deep in recipes and PDFs and numbers are flying everywhere, and yet, mistakes, they happen, they fall through the cracks, uh, because we are human. Just doing our best. And we're all just doing our best. TLDR, if you have a version of Sweet Enough that you bought between uh, March 28th and present day, the recipe is wrong in the book. But the good news is that I caught it in time. I was able to issue a correction, which I think a lot of people paid attention to. I had our designer, Britt, remake the recipe page so that you could print it out and then tape it inside your book if you wanted. Um, alternatively, you can go through with a pen and just change the amounts because the, the process, the technique is the same. It's just the numbers of the ingredients are wrong. So I'm just trying to spread the news as widely as humanly possible to draw attention to the fact that A, this recipe is delicious, it's fantastic, it is like a really incredible cookie that like should belong in your cookie repertoire, especially if you're a shortbread fan, but also that the recipe is incorrect in the book, but this is the correct one and you can still make it and you have a great time. Have fun. And when I was thinking about having a great time, I was thinking of my friend Bobby. And I say he's my friend, which he is, but we met because he is a trainer. And I was like, I need to, I would, I desire to be fit. I desire fitness in my life. I met Bobby at an event at South by Southwest and he basically forced his way into my life. <laughs> and that's true though. Bobby infamously does not cook. I don't know what he eats. I think it's like powdered astronaut food and like energy <laughs> drinks. But Bobby does bake, and he's always said that. He's always been like, I don't cook, but I do like to bake, and I knew that about him. So when I published this latest book, Sweet Enough, which is, you know, by and large, a sweet baking book, I really was like, wow, right up his alley. But never thought he would take to it quite so intensely as he did. Welcome back to Bob Bakes, a new series where we make one of Allison Roma's extra perfect recipes in 60 seconds or less. So let's everybody welcome Bobby to the stage. Woo. He will be vlogging the whole time. No promises if he's gonna keep his shirt on or take it off. It's coming off. Yeah. Do you want yeah, to tell everybody right. how strong I am first? <laughs> You're so strong. You can lift heavy. You're deadlifting like 135 off the no, ground. No, I'm not. I swear to God. Was I? With the trap bar, with the, the handles on the side. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, I did get a spray tan for this, so. We know. We did, well, they don't. <laughs> they, they just think I'm naturally this I think we beautiful. do know. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. Do you know what it's supposed to say? Well, yeah. I'm gonna look it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay, there we go. So I'm gonna have Bobby uh, grate the lemons into the sugar, and you're gonna use your beautiful, gorgeous, fit hands to rub the sugar into the lemon zest. And do you know what that's gonna do? Tell me. Do, are you, do you not know? Putting the lemon in the sugar. Yeah. Is going to... With your hands, you're gonna rub it hands. together. It's gonna, what's it called? What's the word? Yes. Caramelize it. Perfect, nailed it. Yeah. And rubbing the zest uh, into the sugar before you bake with it, huge, huge, huge difference in like releasing the essential oils, the aromas of the lemon. It goes a really, really long way. Smell that. Nothing, right? Nothing. I was I was really nervous this. how I supposed I to smell something. No, but. I was ready to lie though. Smell that. <laughs> Lemony. So I just scratched the lemon. Snicky. This is like 101, any, you know, baking, whatever. You're gonna measure three quarters of a cup of sugar into this bowl here. Three quarters Granulated of a cup. Granulated sugar, yeah. Check. 
Are you a side? Are you a side swiper? Or are you just kind of a? With sugar, it doesn't matter. I I only am. Um, that does that look full? <laughs> ma'am, no, ma'am. Do we keep a clean kitchen here? That's full. Yeah, shake okay. it so till it's level. Perfect. Amazing. Yeah. The end. Every single person who I ask to measure something will, will consistently not measure to the top. And I'm like, I didn't say three quarters ish. I don't like how our- three quarters. Yeah, our power dynamic has changed now that I'm yeah. the subject. I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> You're about to get trained. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Drop and give me three quarters of a cup of sugar. <laughs> three quarters of a cup goes into the dough and a quarter cup goes on top. And a quarter cup of sugar uh, gets mixed with that lemon zest because it's gonna go from looking like really fine and sort of uh, uniform and like very even sort of sand texture to like a really sort of frizzled Angora sweater energy once we make it with the lemon zest. So you're gonna zest two lemons into the qu three quarters of a cup bowl. <laughs> and you're gonna zest one lemon into here. Okay. How's the zesting technique, Roman? Inefficient. Can, Can I, I go show faster? You? No, no, I'll show you what I do. Uh, you show me what you do. Go lengthwise. Just a simple rotation. Yeah, that's pretty good, I'd say. I'd say it's better. That, well, <laughs> you know. Um, so while Bobby does that, um, I am going to chop my preserved lemon. This is sort of the second part of the lemon in this lemon shortbread. If you don't have preserved lemon, this recipe is beautiful without it, but the preserved lemon, given like its soft jammy texture upon purchasing or making, is gonna give you like soft, cool, like almost crystallized jammy pieces of lemon in your shortbread. And that's gonna add like a very, very cool texture. What am I looking for when I'm It should be bald and, oh. yeah, that's good. Oh, this is good? Yeah. And then like see it. all this? You always yeah. wanna tap it. So that's clean. Um, preserved lemon is by nature salty. It is floral, it is acidic, but the bitterness is really uh, tamed from like a regular lemon, which is why I'm not using like a whole fresh lemon in this. Do you then use those lemons later for things? Yeah, I keep those around for juicing, but the zest is gone. Um, okay, so you're gonna take your fingers and you're just gonna literally rub the zest. If I were uh, smarter, I would have just done this all together and then measured out a quarter cup of the lemon sugar, but. It's too late now. It is too late now. Looks like a, like a shaved ice. It does look like shaved ice. And that texture is gonna stay on top of our shortbread afterwards. So I'm finally chopping this. You can add that into our mixer. And into that mixing bowl, we're gonna basically add the rest of the ingredients except for the flour. So we're gonna add our powdered sugar, preserved lemon, kosher salt, and most importantly, butter. Vanilla, if you have it. So, Bobby, in there, I'm gonna have you measure, oh <laughs> LeBron over here. <laughs> I <was> Didn't <laughs> get that. I think LeBron That's is a really, he seems like a really good guy. LeBron, come on home movies. We could do Taco Tuesday together, LeBron. It's Taco Tuesday! We're doing a quarter cup of powdered sugar. So for this, you're gonna measure more similarly to flour, like a scoop and a level. Scoop and a level. Nice. Nailed it. Yeah. David, take notes. Seriously, I was gonna. I didn't want to say it. I do like using David measuring flour as a reoccurring bit whenever we teach people how not to do it. <laughs> nice, right? Nice. Yeah. Scoop and level. What do I level with my finger? Uh -huh. Oh god, you thought this was a good idea. I'll be sure to remember that when we talk about the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. The whole reason we're doing this is because I messed up. And this is a half a preserved lemon finely chopped. You can see it. I didn't like mush it into a paste. Measure one teaspoon of kosher salt into this bowl. Teamwork makes the dream work. Little, little. Oh. Okay. For this, I did go with an unsalted butter because of the preserved lemon. It does sort of give you the you know, in-depth saltiness. When in doubt, use unsalted butter. You can always add more salt, but you can't take away. It's kind of an entrancing uh, cutting style you have. Uh, how so? Just I like, like to make it into little... Cheese cubes. Um, so this is two and a half sticks of butter. I'm gonna add a little bit of this vanilla bean paste um, because I can't find my vanilla extract. 
it's a really good product. I just don't think it's like a product that most home cooks are using. Um, I will say it is extremely useful, especially if you don't want to buy vanilla beans, but it is definitely more concentrated than vanilla extract. I mean, you can smell it from here. Yeah. It's... Zing! <laughs> I'm awake. I'm just gonna measure a scant little, it's very gloopy. All right, so Bobby, have you, I know you typically use a handheld electric mixer. I'm very strong, yes. This is, I think, easier. This rocks. Yeah, this is good. And more efficient, it gets you like a fluffier texture. It will take you a fraction of the time. I don't know what you would do for your own personal videos because so much of your appeal is like where you like do it with your hand and you show off your bicep and then you get sweaty and then you take off your shirt. This doesn't really allow for that, but I, you know. I'll find a way. Yeah, oh, I, we know. <laughs> um, okay, so you go to like number four, maybe? Not too high. Maybe four. And now for our flour, which we'll just have on standby while this mixes, we're gonna measure two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. Okay, this is how I measure flour. Pay attention. I scoop and I level. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I wish we'd been doing so, that the whole time. I've been doing a spoon. Well, that's no way people. to live, Bobby. Um, so scoop another cup, please. Okay. Oh, she said please. Oh, no. You have to do it all in one motion. Oh, oh, yeah, and then level. Not bad, that's good. No, Rob, he went. Well, he did a lot of it, he, he kept packing it in, like he scooped most of it. Oh, busted! No! Oh, yeah. You're a, wow! You're a snitch! You wanna like play the, the, you wanna play the way game? Dump it all out, bro. And then you go... Yeah. Yeah, nice. Alright, let's see how much Bobby's cup of flour weighs. What you do for 145? 145, 150, max. All right, let's see it, Bobby. 140 minimum. One time. 145 is our goal. I'm gonna say, if I had to guess, by the way, that this just went down, he's gonna be a little happy. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a 152. Wow, I'm, I'm gonna say in the 150 range. 147, price is right, sirs. 140. Oh, wow. Oh, it's because he Oh, it, it so feels much. so good. He did fluff. Yeah. We should have taken the fluff and it Well, I turned my back. I didn't know what happened in this flower jar. Yeah. I thought he was packing. What I hear is a bunch of sore losers. No, One, bro, 140 under, is acceptable. I accept yeah. 140. Because you were under, Bobby, just to be clear. Yeah. yeah. Price is right rules. You went over. <laughs> uh, one David's more. out. Oh, you gotta hit the gym, bro. Yeah. I'm trying. Allison won't let me leave. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we have basically done everything in preparation for our dough, it's time to prepare the pan. I'm gonna increase the speed a little bit just to get it a little bit fluffier. But it's doing exactly what it should be doing. It's becoming light, it's becoming creamy. It's like a beautiful paste rather than like a chunky like mixture of stuff. For me, a hallmark of shortbread is it's like crumbly, sort of almost airy but dense texture. It's airy because you're beating air into the butter and the sugar mixture. It's dense because there's no leavening. There's no egg, there's no baking powder, there's no baking soda. So it's a juxtaposition. It is a contradiction. It is everything and nothing at the same time. And it's because of this step right here. So if I just do this. Okay, yeah. All right. If you're the kind of person that can't deal with these edges, then you can use scissors to make like a perfect rectangular. That's not me. Do you want to trim or? Me, I, this, so the way we out? do it is that, yeah, I'm a little stressed out, I'm gonna be honest. Do you want to do a little trimming? I'll trim, okay. but you wouldn't normally trim. I sure would not. So if you want to have an authentic sweet enough experience, don't you dare trim Nice. All right, do you see our uh, butter mixture? What looks do you like think? Looks like mashed potatoes. It does look like mashed potatoes. Good visual cue, Bobby. Oh, thank you. One more trip just to get everything. And then I'm gonna have you add the flour. With the mixer off, because otherwise it can Ooh. go everywhere. So just dump it in. Augustus Gloopy. <laughs> it's Willy Wonka. Okay. No? 
I haven't seen the new one. That's the one with Gene Wilder. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> also, the new one isn't out yet it's... with Timothy Chalamet. Also, isn't it crazy that Timothy Chalamet and Johnny Depp have both played Willy Wonka? who are so radically different than Gene Wilder, who is like a comedic genius right. and like really made the role. And then they got two people who aren't really known for comedy or being funny at all. And then they cast them in that iconic role. I would pass. <laughs> yeah, you heard it here okay, first, cool. folks. You hear that, studio? We respectfully decline. Yeah. She is not an actor. Just want to get ahead of the... <laughs> <laughs> Someone call Chalamet. Now, Roman's passed. I'm making shortbread, of course. Um, okay, see the dough? It looks like shortbread dough. Do you want to taste it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was really quick too. Yeah, yeah it was the shortest part of this whole fucking video. Mmm. Right. Delicioso. She's coming out. So now comes the fun part. There's no like real technique here. You literally just pack the dough into this baking dish into an as even layer as possible. Okay. So using your hands. So uh. free the dough from there. I'm gonna empty the rest of this. Operation free the dough. Play dough. I'm like very draconian about making sure that like every last drop of batter, dough, cream, etc., is like exited the vessel. Are you a are you a a, a whisk liquor? Are you a whisk? Oh, I'm a whisk liquor, all right. Okay. Yeah, I think we all know that I am. Okay. She loves the chef. Things taste. you can tell by a woman just by looking at her. Um, okay. Okay. And press it into all the corners. So yeah, I'm just gonna go a little bit more into the corners. If you're finding this like too annoying to work with, another thing you can do is either stick it in the fridge to let it firm up for a few, or you can use a piece of parchment Ooh. to like really get in there. And at this point, it's flat. It's even. It's on its way to being shortbread. An important thing to do is to dock it using a knife or a fork. And you'll probably see this technique often in like blind baking tart shells or pie, like the top of a pie. We're creating little holes to allow steam to escape. And this does two things. This will keep our shortbread nice, even, and flat, rather than like buckled and bubbled and bloop, bloop. And it will help it bake it all the way evenly through. Otherwise, you might notice it can be a little doughy in the center. This is a fun part. This is a fun, this is a fun job for Bobby. Okay. Oh, okay. For Bobby or for Roman? Ooh. I'm showing, I'm showing. There's a lot of. All right. <laughs> Seems like it takes a lot of work, though. I don't want to get sweaty. <laughs> I don't want to get sweaty. Is now? Is it happening now? I will say that I do have a, they put a mic down that way, so I don't know. This is why we invited you on. <laughs> you don't need to. No one will be listening when you're sure. <laughs> How, do you like space between yours? Am I going too narrow? Is that oh, that's. Too much? Yeah. Okay. See, yeah. Well, More like that. That's like you're trying to kill a person. Wow. I don't know how, why you bake. What's your why? <laughs> okay, dark. Um, and make sure you get in the edges as well. Okay. Last step, we're gonna sprinkle that lemon sugar over top in as even layer as you can. You got this. I don't know if I do. It's gotta take the shirt off. I'm in. I'm, I feel trapped in this shirt. I don't know. Actually, I now that you know, I'm seeing it. Seeing it at the end, I think I might have done a pretty good job. It's a little clumpy. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. You can you can like take it and kind of like smush it into the dough as well. And then to just reinforce the salty motif and the crunchy and the visual. Just going a little flaky salt. Um, okay, 350, in you go. Bye for now, salty lemon shortbread. All the way in, center. Yep, there we go. All right, setting a timer. 30, we'll check it after 30. So obviously the shortbread is gonna take 30 to 35 minutes to bake. We have some time in our hands. I thought what better way to use up that time than and to- work out. Than to surprise <laughs> you with a delicious cocktail. 
even better. Yay, the only thing Bobby loves more than Instagram fame and working out is alcohol. <laughs> Responsibly. <laughs> and his dog and his wife. But Thank you. <laughs> I'm thinking lemonade. Okay. I'm thinking there's alcohol in it. I'm thinking there's bourbon in it. Ooh. So remember when we zested all those lemons? Yeah. Well, and you said, do you use those lemons? And I didn't even ask you to say that. That was very organic. Surprise, we are gonna use the lemons. Press. <laughs> Spot to press. There you go. There you go. Bobby, how's your form? How's your form? I'll show you my oh. form. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am gonna have you juice these lemons. I. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Bobby does wear a shirt when we work out together. By the way, I just want everybody to know that. Bourbon lemonade or bourbon Arnold Palmer, whichever direction you want to go in. We are going to <laughs> use uh, fresh lemon juice, bourbon as like the the core, the core the co mm -hmm. ingredients of this Maker's Mark cocktail. I've already started some tea brewing because I want to take my lemonade into Arnold Palmer territory. I'm using a hibiscus tea because I think that's elegant and classy. Um, but classic Lipton's is also perfect and iconic. Are you comfortable juicing lemons in without a top? I mean, only one way to find out. So just juice all the lemons in here and we'll, we'll strain out the, the, the seeds and the peel later, or the pulp. Do you have a special way? Because I'm going to do this dramatically. I do have a special way. It's Maker's Mark. <laughs> um, Maker's thank Mark. you, Maker's Mark. <laughs> I juice the lemons like this. Cool tip is that once you have zested the lemon, uh -huh. infinitely easier to juice. It just is. It's softer, it's more malleable. You can like really squeeze the hell out of it. That's fine, we're gonna strain it. Oh, we're gonna strain it? Yeah, just oh. give it help. Pulp, Ch pulp and all. Just chunk it up. Chunk it up. Chunk, <laughs> chunk it up. What are we, shooting the idol? <laughs> oh, that was a modern one. Topical? Oh, that's nice. Chunk it up. Chunk, chunk it up. Chunk it up. So in here, uh, this is just two cups of hot water that I have steeped tea into. So two cups of liquid, tea if you're choosing, and to that I'm adding um, some sugar. This will depend on your taste, but in, in you know, instead of making like a separate simple syrup or doing anything like that, I just make the simple syrup with the tea because the tea is already hot, the sugar will dissolve in the hot water, it's done. Hibiscus. So I'm gonna start with three quarters of a cup of sugar. You can always add more sugar to your lemonade or iced tea or whatever, but I think for like the bulk of it, the lion's share, you do wanna make sure that it is pre-dissolved in like a hot water or hot tea. So I'm just starting to dissolve this. And I'm gonna let this cool all the way because I don't wanna add anything warm to fresh citrus juice. Also warmish tea mixture, plus ice is gonna give you like a watery whatever. So, you know, you could do this ahead of time. When life gives you lemons, make Maker's Mark bourbon Arnold Palmer. Nice. Make your mark. This isn't an audition, Bobby. <laughs> you got the role. <clears throat> <laughs> when life gives you lemons. No. I was going for a deeper voice. All, All right. right, I'm gonna strain Bobby's lemon juice. So we're gonna add six ounces of bourbon to here. That's for one or for the whole thing? It serves four to six. It's a it's a batch, so it serves four to six people, not one person. Oh, okay. Oh. oh, that's a fun sound. Okay, well, fun story about that sound. That sound comes from this patent bottle design. It's patented. Yeah, it's like they made a specific bottle thanks to Margie, a woman. She was married to the man. Um, <laughs> she said that she wanted you to hear the bourbon as well as see and smell the bourbon. So that glug glug is because of the divot in the neck. It's like a- That's awesome. For not an engineer, it seems pretty engineery. Yeah, that red wheat, you can smell it. Are you getting any soft red winter wheat in this? Oh yeah. Is it just me or is this oh, mm. evoking soft red winter wheat? That's giving soft red winter wheat. We are gonna add a cup each okay. of lemon juice and our sweetened tea. All right, we're gonna strain oh. the tea into here. Oh. 
Bobby's filming his own show right now. <laughs> I know, this is, is he's giving a vaudeville over here. Yeah. We're gonna have a little bit of extra tea. And that's fine. Oh, that's a pretty color. Isn't it nice? It is a pretty color. I think if you're making like an individual Arnold Palmer, you're probably doing the like layered look, which is also good. No, you have a giant ham in your freezer from six months ago. <laughs> I'll ask the stupid question here. Sure. Is this normally how the spoon works? Is it supposed to be? I think so, yeah. Okay. I think if you're stirring lemonade, huh? like, Google it. Google image search, old timey lady stirring lemonade <laughs> in a pitcher. They're always doing it with the handle, not with the spoon, right? I can't imagine that search query won't result in that result. <laughs> you guys would not believe the shit I Google, because the things that pop into my brain, I'm like, why do I think this? Like, surely there's a visual reference that has Impacted. What, what am I googling? Woman stirring. Old, old timey woman. woman. That sounds like something you add to this AI. Yeah, yes, right. and I bet it would result in some pretty cool things, Rebecca. <laughs> um, all right. I feel like mint is festive for a tea, like iced tea energy. Very festive. Cute. Cute. Yeah. Toast me. Cheers, Bobby. Bobby's really teaching me how to be young. He just said under his breath, that's actually fantastic. <laughs> like, what the f do you think we're doing here? Maybe we should rename the series Actually Good. This is delicious. Yes. I would drink this all summer. You can. If you go to makersmark.com slash Allison. Oh, if you go to maker. <laughs> yeah, and you can. If you go to makersmark.com slash Allison Rome, backslash or slash? Slash. I always mess this up. And you can. If you go to makersmark.com slash Allison Roman. You can order all the ingredients to make this cocktail and hit them with the old razzle dazzle. Hit them with the razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle. It's been 35-ish minutes. Um, my oven does classically run a little bit low. I went closer to the 38 mark. Great job, Bobby. Thank you. It's fuzzy, it's beautiful, it's golden brown. This will be malleable enough to cut into bars or triangles or squares for like, I would say five-ish minutes, five to 10. I am an impatient person. I like instantaneous gratification. So I like to speed up the process a little bit. So I'm gonna remove this and just acting quickly. You wanna be close to the cutting board. I'm just gonna move this to here. And that's gonna expedite the cooling process by like 50 to 70%. In my head, intense music is playing. <laughs> Could that be more gorgeous? Looks amazing. I know. So I like to sort of envision my marks. I know that I'm gonna cut off the edges because I like my shortbread to be like little toast soldiers. I'm gonna cut it in half crosswise. Boom. And then I'm gonna cut each half in half again. Bobby, I hope you're paying attention because you're doing it next. I couldn't be more terrified. I'm gonna cut off the edges here. Sorry, I do want you to do this, but I also just want it to be right. Because <laughs> I'm Quit trying that. to teach the people. <laughs> and this is just like a fussy thing that I'm doing. This is also to me, the edges here, the ultimate chef's treat. So I'm gonna have you do the second half here. Okay. So just kind of visualize here, go slow. Hey, you're doing skinny guys. Yeah. Do you hear that? Crunchy. All right, so you do the Salty. Rest. All right. And a Thank shortbread, you. you'll notice, is going to firm up as it cools. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> These need to cool 10 minutes, but you can get you can get a little preview of what they're gonna taste like by eating the chef's treat. Bobby, today you're a chef. But look at that texture of the shortbread. All days. Like when you see the cross section. It's dense yet buttery, it's flaky yet crumbly, it's tender, it's airy, but also fur, like it's it's everything. This shortbread has everything. Okay, Stefan. That was Stefan. That was a bad Stefan. Cheers. Mm. Mm, really good. Mm. <laughs> How many whisks? Seven out of five. Nice. Wow. This is delicious. Cheers. Jaws. Thanks for making today so fun. Hey, thank you for having me. I hate working out, but I like working out because I like Bobby. But also he taught me the importance of strength. <laughs> <laughs>
And also, above and beyond, as always, thank you to Maker's Mark for sponsoring this week's episode of Home Movies. We love you. We love this oh. Beveragino, and we love this shortbread. Oh, it's so good. Really well together. Really well together. It's so good. Yeah. It's tea time. Mm. With, or... with bourbon. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I, I just thought of that. Double, I did both ways. Yeah. Tea, Arnold Palmer, golf, iced tea, tea as in golf, tea time, shortbread. Drink. It's like the it's synergy is unreal. It's all there. I try to, I go, I aim for one a week. I set a goal for myself. I one sweet enough recipe a week. That's so nice. And then I'm working through the book. Yeah. And if I, I mean, these are amazing. These are moving top of my power rankings. What's at the other top? This is, there's big debate. People love the carrot cake, obviously. The carrot cake is really good. It's honestly like, dare I say, too simple for a home movies because it is so easy, but it's probably personal top five. Um, okay, Farm anyway, up. but we're talking about these shortbread. They're amazing. I hope you make them the correct way. I hope this was informational, uh, educational, and illuminating. And mistakes happen. We're only human. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> cool juggling. Top it. Rub the zest. Go a little bit more into the corners. And you give me, seconds. give me, give me! Uh, yeah! Any lemons that have anything left to give. I want, I want this. Don't let me stop you. Thank you, that's a wrap on Bobby. That's a wrap on Bobby.